scientific management. Principles of management. We are aware that business enterprises follow various principles as broad guidelines for stating the vision of their businesses as well as the ways to achieve the same. A number of management thinkers and writers have studied principles of management from time to time. Frederick Winslow Taylor and Henry Fayol, among other management thinkers, have contributed immensely towards the study of management as a discipline. Taylor gave the concept of scientific management, whereas Fayol emphasized administrative principles. Let us learn about these concepts in detail. Scientific Management The scientific management approach was suggested by Frederick Winslow Taylor in the 20th century. Taylor started his career as an operator and rose to the position of chief engineer. He conducted various experiments during this process which forms the basis of scientific management. Scientific management implies application of scientific principles for studying and identifying management problems. According to Taylor, if a work is analyzed scientifically, it will be possible to find one best way to do it. Principles of Scientific Management Taylor proposed four principles of scientific management. Let us have a quick look on the same. Science, not rule of thumb. In the earlier days of the Industrial Revolution, managers used to apply personal judgment to solve the problems they confronted during their work. This is referred to as rule of thumb. However, this method was suffered from the limitation of a trial and error approach. Hence, Taylor suggested the development and use of scientific methods to determine time required to perform a job. Determine a fair day's work for workmen. Determine the best way of doing work. Set work standards like selecting standard tools and equipments, maintaining standard working conditions, to name a few. Harmony not discord. This principle requires a complete change of outlook of workers and management with respect to their mutual relations and work efforts. According to this principle, all members of a group should carry out their tasks in harmony in order to contribute more than the sum of individual contributions. Cooperation, not individualism. This principle states that there should be complete cooperation between management and employees' labor instead of individualism. For this, the management needs to keep its ears open to any constructive suggestions made by the employees. The employees should be part of management and if any important decisions are taken, workers should be taken into confidence. Development of each and every person to his or her greatest efficiency and prosperity. According to this principle, managers should select each employee scientifically as well as assign work according to his or her physical, mental and intellectual capabilities. Moreover, employees should be given the required training in order to increase their efficiency. Techniques of Scientific Management Taylor developed a number of techniques like time study, motion study, 
standardization of equipment and working conditions and differential piece rate of wages in order to facilitate scientific management. A quick look on the same. Functional foremanship is a technique which involves supervision of a worker by several specialist foremen. Taylor developed this technique to improve the quality of work as single supervisor may not be an expert in all aspects of the work. Taylor advocated appointment of eight foremen, four at planning level and other four at implementation level. Each worker will have to take orders from these eight foremen in related process of function of production. Standardization of work Standardization refers to the process of setting standards for every business activity. According to Taylor, standardization of process, raw material, time, product, machinery, methods or working conditions is necessary to achieve standard output from workers. Simplification of work Simplification refers to the elimination of superfluous varieties, sizes and dimensions. Managers may eliminate unnecessary diversity of products in order to save cost of labor, machines and tools. Simplification of work results in reduced inventories, fuller utilization of equipment and increasing turnover. Fatigue study Fatigue study is a technique that seeks to determine the amount and frequency of rest intervals in completing a task. Taylor suggested that workers in an organization should be given frequent rest pauses to increase their efficiency and productivity. This will help workers to regain stamina and work again with the same capacity. Method study Method study is a technique which is used to determine the best way of doing a job in order to reduce the cost of production and increase the satisfaction of customers. There are various parameters to find out the best way from procurement of raw materials till the delivery of final products. Taylor devised the concept of assembly line by using method study. Auto companies are using assembly line method which involves deciding the sequence of operations, place for men, machines and raw materials and so on. Time study Time study determines the standard time taken to perform a well-defined job. Managers use time measuring devices to observe the standard time taken by each element of task and every worker is expected to perform the task in that standard time. The study aims to calculate the number of workers to be employed, frame suitable incentive schemes and determine labor costs. Motion study Motion study refers to a technique which involves close observation of the movements of body and limbs required to perform a job. Taylor used stopwatches and various symbols and colors to identify different motions. Managers may use motion study to eliminate unnecessary movements in order to reduce total time taken to complete a job efficiently. Differential Peace Wage System Differential Peace Wage System is a method of wage payment in which workers are paid at different rates as per their performances. 
managers use standard time and other parameters to classify workers and offer higher wages to those who perform above standard. Mental Revolution Mental Revolution involves a complete change in the attitude of workers and management towards each other. Management as well as workers need to realize that they require one another in order to increase the size of surplus. According to Taylor, management should share a part of surplus with workers and workers should also contribute their might so that the company can make profits. Fayol's Principles of Management In the development of classical school of management thought, Henry Fayol's administrative theory provides an important link. Fayol evolved 14 general principles of management which are still considered important in management. Let us learn about the Fayol's principles of management in detail. Division of work According to this principle, a person is not capable of doing all types of work. Therefore, work should be divided into small tasks or jobs. Managers should assign each task or job to a person for which he is best suited in order to facilitate specialization and improve efficiency of an organization. Authority and Responsibility Authority and responsibility are closely related. Authority refers to the right to give orders and the power to get exactness from their subordinates. Whereas, responsibility involves being accountable. According to this principle, managers should be given adequate authority to discharge their responsibilities. If a person is given authority without corresponding responsibility, there may be arbitrary and unmindful use of authority. Similarly, if a person is given some responsibility without adequate authority, such person will be ineffective. Discipline Discipline is the obedience to organizational rules and employment agreement which are necessary for the working of the organization. The principle emphasizes that subordinates should respect their superiors and obey their orders. Superiors, on the other hand, should also honor their subordinates' commitments without any prejudice. If such discipline is observed, there will be no problem of industrial disputes. Unity of Command the principle of unity of command states that each individual employee in a formal organization should receive orders from and be responsible to only one superior. An employee getting orders from two superiors at the same time may lead to confusion regarding the tasks to be done. Unity of Direction According to this principle, there should be one head and one plan for a group of activities having same objectives. It is necessary to direct the efforts of all the members of a group towards common goals under the direction of one head. Managers should follow this principle to promote smooth coordination of activities, efforts and resources towards common goals. Subordination of individual interest to general interest. We know that every worker has some individual interest for working in a company and the company has also got its own objectives. This principle suggests that the individual's interest should be subordinated to the overall interest of an organization. This ensures welfare of the organization as well as its individual members. 
remuneration of employees. Fayol recommends that the overall pay and compensation should be fair to both employees and the organization. That is, employees should be paid fair wages within the paying capacity of a company. This reduces tension and differences between workers and management and create harmonious relationship and a pleasing atmosphere of work. Centralization and Decentralization The concentration of decision-making authority is called centralization, whereas its dispersal among more than one person is known as decentralization. According to Fayol, an organization should maintain proper and effective adjustment between centralization and decentralization in order to achieve its objectives. Scalar Chain An organization consists of superiors and subordinates. The formal chain of authority from highest to lowest ranks are known as Scalar Chain. According to Fayol, organizations should have a chain of authority and communication that runs from top to bottom and should be followed by managers and the subordinates. This principle suggests that Scala chain should not be violated in the normal course of formal communication. However, if there is an emergency, then F can directly contact P through gangplank so that communication is not delayed. Order the principle of order states that there should be proper, systematic and orderly arrangement of physical and social factors such as land, raw materials, tools and equipments and employees respectively. An organization should provide each man the work for which he is best suited and make proper space available to keep materials safely in order to increase its productivity and efficiency. Equity The principle of equality emphasizes kindliness and justice in the behavior of managers towards workers to ensure loyalty and devotion among employees. This principle should be followed and applicable at every level of management. There should not be any discrimination as regards caste, sex and religion. Stability of Personnel The principle of stability of personnel suggests that employee turnover should be minimized to maintain organizational efficiency. Employees should be provided stability and continuity of their tenure of employment. This could be achieved through attractive remuneration and honorable treatment of personnel. Initiative Initiative means taking the first step with self-motivation. It is thinking out and executing a plan. Under this principle, Management should encourage its employees to develop and carry out their plans for improvements. But employees should not go against the established practices of the company for the sake of being different. Esprit the Cop Esprit the Cop refers to steam spirit. According to this principle, Managers should promote a team spirit of unity and harmony among employees in order to realize its objectives. Individual and group efforts should be effectively integrated and coordinated to achieve the best possible results. Fayol's Principles versus Taylor's Principles both Fayol and Taylor have contributed immensely to the knowledge of management. 
following are the points on the basis of which we can make out the difference between their contributions. In a nutshell, business enterprises follow various principles as broad guidelines for stating the vision of their businesses as well as the ways to achieve the same. Frederick Winslow Taylor gave the concept of scientific management, whereas Henry Fayol emphasized administrative principles. Taylor's principles of scientific management are science, not the rule of thumb, harmony, not discord, cooperation, not individualism, development of each person to her or his greatest efficiency and prosperity. The techniques of scientific management as per Taylor were functional foremanship, standardization and simplification of work, fatigue study, method study, time study, motion study and differential wage system. Fayol, on the other hand, listed 14 principles of management. These are division of work, authority and responsibility, discipline, unity of command, unity of direction, subordination of individual interest to general interest, remuneration of personnel, Centralization and decentralization, scalar chain, order, equity, stability in the tenure of personnel, initiative, and esprit de corps.